today's visitors want more than just a handful of tacky postcards, souvenirs and photos of their holiday. They want to learn, participate and engage with local people and places. Essentially, they want to collect memorable experiences. Experiences can set businesses and destinations apart from their competitors. Here in Queensland, we like to say that the holiday is what the visitor buys, but the experience is what they remember. So what does this mean, and how can we create memorable experiences? Two of the gurus on experiences, Joseph Pine and James Gilmore, argue that experiences are the next step in the progression of economic value. The basic idea is that as economies evolve, they move from extracting commodities such as minerals and food to making goods. The problem in a global economy is that goods have become commoditized. We can differentiate one good from another by adding a service. This moves us from a manufacturing economy to a service-based economy. But unfortunately, good service is no longer enough to differentiate one business from another. We need to go beyond goods and services. We need to design and stage memorable experiences. So we find that economies transition from commodities to goods to services and finally to experiences. Take this bottle of wine for example. Some viticulturists specialise in farming grapes and selling these to wineries to produce wine. The grapes are the commodity and you need about three to five dollars of grapes to make an average bottle of wine. The bottle of wine is manufactured, or in this case produced by a skilled vintner who selects and ferments the grapes. At this point we might buy the bottle in a shop for $10 or $15. We can also dine at a restaurant where a sommelier provides a service by recommending which bottle of wine to have with our meal. The bottle of wine is now part of the service economy. When consumed at a restaurant it might cost $60. In the case of wine, we can turn a service into an experience by involving visitors in wine tasting and wine tours designed to help them learn more about wine. We can turn the winery into a stage for picnics, events and places to enjoy good food and wine with family and friends. There is increasing evidence that there are three different factors that make up an experience. Some lead to satisfaction, some make no difference and others create moments of delight. The first are basic factors that cause dissatisfaction if they're not fulfilled, but don't lead to satisfaction if they're delivered. These basic factors are expected and taken for granted. For example, clean bed linen in a hotel is a basic factor and does not influence satisfaction. If, however, the linen is not clean, we're likely to be dissatisfied. The second group are performance factors. These lead to satisfaction if they are fulfilled, but dissatisfaction if they're not fulfilled. In our hotel example, a warm welcome from reception staff will lead to satisfaction, but if staff appear disinterested, inattentive or abrupt, we might be dissatisfied. The third group are the ones we're really interested in. We call these excitement or delight factors. These increase satisfaction if they're delivered, but they don't cause dissatisfaction if they're missing. Why? because they're unexpected. When they happen, they can be a great source of surprise and delight. In our hotel, this could be chocolates on your pillow, the valet driver leaving a free bottle of water in your car when they retrieve it, or something as simple as staff providing you with local secrets and tips. It turns out that delight or excitement is just one of several ways we can make an experience memorable. One way to think about experiences is across two dimensions. The first corresponds with customer participation. We can be active or passive participants in an experience. The second dimension of experience describes the connection or environmental relationship that unites customers with the experience. And this can range from absorption to immersion. Pine and Gilmore, the experience economy gurus, argue that most successful experiences include four realms. They should be entertaining, they should be educational, they should provide a sense of escape, and they should be aesthetically pleasing. Most memorable experiences include these four elements, although not always in equal amounts. The most memorable experiences are often unique. They are experiences that visitors can only have when they stay in your hotel, 
eat in your restaurant, fly with your airline, or visit your attraction. Let's see if we can spot these four realms in a dining and theatre experience called the Australian Outback Spectacular on Queensland's Gold Coast. So the show has been put together in a way that captures the imagination of people. So once they walk through the door, they feel like they're in the outback and we now take them on a journey. And that happens right from the moment when we hand them a hat and they put a hat on their head. They now immerse themselves and feel like they're part of the experience right from that moment. Um, then through travelling through the show, they get a whole lot of information, education about Australia itself. The show runs for an hour and 45 minutes, which is a long time to hold someone's attention. Um, but this show certainly does that with a whole lot of excitement, with trick riding, um, some fantastic horse skills, animals of all different kinds, and then also the history that, that goes behind it. Whether an experience is memorable or not depends on what happens when the visitor interacts with the site or destination. Visitors design their own experiences in the unique context of each interaction they have with a host. We call this co-creation. It's the meeting point between what visitors bring to the moment and what tourism businesses and destinations provide. Value is co-created when a guest is able to personalise their experience using a stage provided by a tourism business or destination. Through our research, we've discovered that visitors are more likely to remember experiences that are connected with emotion. We can heighten the emotional intensity of an experience by creating opportunities for social interaction between hosts, family members, friends or other travellers, encouraging visitors to participate in an activity or by creating a personal link between the visitor and the experience, providing opportunities to customise the experience, appealing to multiple senses of sight, sound, touch, smell and taste, and telling a story with memorable characters or creating a theme. The nice thing about experiences is that changing the experience does not need to be expensive. Creative ideas for small changes can make a big difference. A remarkable experience can leave visitors with lifelong memories and stories about people and places that they will want to share with others.